Omega Healthcare Investors, is this a great option for you? Is this a good income investment? Is this a good long-term buy and hold? Today, my friends, we're going to look at Omega Healthcare Investors OHI. We're going to look at the opportunities here to invest for income and invest for profit over the long term. Now, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're interested in learning how to grow your wealth with dividend-paying stocks in the future. And do hit me up in the comments below and let me know if you already have shares in OHI or if this is on your radar already. Now first off, we are in fast graphs. We're looking here at the historical um, price to AFFO or the adjusted funds from operation which is the, the best way of looking at these REITs. We can see that there's been reasonable uh, price growth here in black over time. Uh, since about 2014, prices have been more or less um, stable. There's been some several fluctuations there, uh, but more or less going sideways. Now we saw here in orange since about 2007 through 2016, very strong AFFO growth. And then a bit of a decline or, or sideways shift since about uh, the 2015 through to now. Um, in the future here we have estimates and we can see a small increase in AFFO. Now this blue line represents the um, the long term sort of normalised uh, ratio between prices and AFFO. We can see that it's lower than this uh, 15 times and over this uh, chart it's been at about 11.67. So. First off, do analysts uh, do a very good job of estimating uh, what the AFFO is going to be? Well, if we look here, 2018 was a bit of a dud year, um, looking one year out, uh, but generally they can predict uh, sort of 92% of the time fairly well, and, and sometimes companies come in and um, beat those estimates, uh, and this is estimating one year ahead the AFFO with a 10% margin for error. Um, similarly, um, if you're looking two years ahead, uh, generally they do a good job here, they, they hit um, the, the target um, and actually have a good estimate of what AFFO is within a 20% margin of error two years out. And here again we can see the, uh, the challenging year was uh, 2018. Okay, so what then are the opportunities here for an investment? Well, we know that the analysts are usually pretty darn good at estimating what the AFFO is going to be in the future. Here we are in fast graphs looking at the forecasting calculator, uh, and we're looking at what's going to happen here. I'm going to, to look at the, the estimates till the end of 2024, so just under two years. Um, if prices return to this uh, normal price to AFFO ratio of about 10.83 as has uh, been um, consistent over the last five years, we're looking at a total annualised rate of return of just under 16% or a total rate of return of about 33% over this period. Now, there's two things or several things to consider here. Number one, we've got a strong dividend yield. Most of this um, uh, rate of return is going to be from the dividend yield. Um, that should be reasonably consistent if the company continues to do reasonably well. We can see they have a triple B minus uh, Standard & Poor's credit rating, uh, so reasonable credit rating there. And we can see from these analyst estimates that we the analyst estimates have been decreasing uh, a little bit with the time, not substantial amounts, but there has been a, a small erosion of the expected AFFO with time. Other things to note, the dividends are expected to, to be fairly constant or fairly flat, so we're not looking at strong dividend growth here. Um, and we're looking at a, a very sort of small increase in 2023 for the AFFO following a 12% decline in 2022. Uh, and again, a moderate increase in 2024 and then sort of flat in 2025. So here I think uh, a sort of 16% total rate of return um, per annum most of that coming from that dividend yield and some from this uh, small growth here in AFFO also reflected in the current share price. So how has this company been doing and what is the impact? Okay, so this is the, the recent uh, investor presentation. This is information as of about six months ago. Um, it's an income stock. Yes, well, we saw that it had a good income uh, potential there with a good dividend yield. It's been a growth stock. Now that was in the past as we saw with strong AFFO growth <laughs> up until um, about 2015 and since then it hasn't been strong at all. Uh, and we've seen that it's a reasonable um, in terms of the value there trading at a reasonable multiple of AFFO. That hasn't really changed in a substantial way. Okay, so when we begin to look at their portfolio, um, triple net uh, master leases, 
that's the name of the game here, uh, mostly in skilled nursing with some senior housing. Um, strong diversification, uh, 916 properties, 63 operators, and uh, 42 states plus the United Kingdom. Uh, so we're not seeing that sort of concentration risk that we see with the Medical Properties Trust, MPW, uh, with Steward, for example. So there's some good benefits here as well. Now, not only that, they have fairly good diversification over the US states. So if we look here at the investment uh, concentration by location, we can see even if something went wrong with a particular state um, or, or regulations or funding changes, uh, it's not going to be too severe for them. So they've got some pretty good diversification. Now, one of the, the benefit of their model is this idea here of the fixed rate uh, escalators. So every year with the, the increase in the rates charged to their tenants, um, that can be quite nice with that annual escalator. So it's not going to be enough to keep it up with inflation, um, <laughs> with the current inflation rates, obviously, but it is something and it can be quite favourable for a, a long term landlord like Omega Health. Now, a big part of uh, what we see here when we're investing in OH8 is they've, uh, OHI is they've got really good average lease terms here at the moment of 9.4 years. And we can see here, it's not really until about uh, 2027 that we see many of these long-term leases begin to hit expiration uh, and may need a renegotiation at that point. So uh, for the near term, a lot of these leases are locked in as long as their tenants can remain able to pay the rent. Um, OHI has some security here in terms of the, the money rolling in. Now this is information here provided as of November the 3rd, and this is some of the, the key issues and, and challenges that they're facing here with the COVID-19 operator tenant. Um, part of the challenge here is uh, tenant operators representing a property uh, approximately 12% of the annualised contractual rent and mortgage obligations did not pay all of their contractual obligations. So they probably paid some, but not all. So in October, uh, they collected rent from operators uh, totaling approximately 91% of the annualised contracted um, rent and mortgage obligations. So they're going to be working with these operators, the outstanding operators, quite carefully, uh, and, and they're going to be sort of developing individualised plans, and we'll get a sense of what this means next. Okay, so here's uh, the first operator update, Maplewood Senior Living, uh, 17 Omega facilities. So with the proposed restructuring um, that they're putting in place again, it's, it's individualised and unique. Um, they, they've noted here that Maplewood didn't receive uh, sufficient uh, funding and support to, to fully offset the uh, liquidity impact. Um, they they believe that the occupancy is more or less re uh, rebounded. Um, and uh, the, the current cash flows here are insufficient to cover rent and interest obligations to OHI in the near term. Um, so what Omega has been doing is they're going to be deferring the rent escalators. Uh, that makes some sense. It's not a big thing for Omega, but it's going to make a difference for the operator. Um, they're going to uh, defer some of the, the interest on the secured revolving credit facility. Um, and increase the secured uh, credit facility for them as well, and they're also on a cash basis now for revenue recognition. So, so this is ongoing. Um, they're fairly confident uh, that Maplewood will be returning to paying full contractual rent and interest soon, however. Um, but uh, this is, is something to take into account. Now, if we look through the next couple of operator updates, we'll see something similar. So here, for example, Levy. Um, they sold several properties, provided additional uh, financing. Um, they'll be selling further uh, properties in coming months as well. Um, and, and that's going to be presenting them with several uh, months of partially deferred rent also. Okay, so in the UK, 42 Omega owned uh, care homes. Um, a deferral of up to four months of rent for healthcare homes in the UK. Um, they did receive uh, cash rents though um, in quarter four 2022 and the full year 2022. Um, and also they're providing some nominal short term financing to support the uh, tenant as well. So what does this mean? 
Well it means if we're going to be holding this long term, I don't think there's anything too much to worry about. There will be these cycles, such as we're seeing now, where some of the tenants will be under financial stress and pressure. Um, Omega Healthcare is supporting the tenants where they can with some of those some movements that they've uh, noted there in the presentation. Um, and if you're holding for the long term as well, you've also got that really nice dividend yield that you're able to uh, take advantage of. And that dividend yield should be able to tithe you over and, and support you during periods where the prices decline and some of the tenants have uh, difficulty. Um, I think Omega Healthcare Investors is a, a good income play. But as we can see here in the coming years, uh, I don't think we can expect very high uh, AFFO gains. Um, and I'd be very surprised if prices increased much either. Now, if we think about the current warnings that they have in their investor presentation, there could be further quarters and months where the, the rent is deferred or not collected in full. And I think we could see some st substantial further declines in prices um, as a reflection of that as the market worries and panics a bit. Now, if you're into income, that's possibly a really good time to pick up some shares. Uh, not too many, obviously, as the price falls down, um, and, and begin to collect those uh, dividend checks as well over time. Now again, uh, this is a good approach for a very, very long-term investor. So, if you're a short-term investor, um, it, it's probably not uh, an appropriate investment. There is, uh, as I say, some substantial downside risk, I think, still in the price that we're going to see reflected. But if you're a long-term investor, I think you could hold this even here for a couple of years and still have a reasonable rate of return driven largely by those dividends. So, is this of interest to you? Is this a, a company you already hold in your portfolio? Or is it one that you might add to get some of those juicy dividend checks? Hit the comments down below and let me know what you think. And I will see you again soon.